Is it on? Yes. It's on. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I would like to welcome you to, to the celebration uh, of, of life and achievements of, of our dear friend and colleague, uh, Sol Amarel. Uh, this is not the way uh, we planned. Uh, this was planned originally as a, as a retirement party, uh, but unfortunately Sol passed away uh, last Wednesday. Uh, we decided uh, to, to hold this event uh, nevertheless to just celebrate uh, his life and his uh, achievements. And I, I really thank you very much for all uh, to come here uh, in this uh, sad occasion, but we would like to turn it into a celebration of the past. Uh, and and uh, uh, there's a number of uh, people who would like to talk about, about Saul. Uh, I would like just to start with uh, something which I think he would enjoy tremendously, and something which happened today. So, uh, 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 so uh, Kaz and Don were, were witnesses of this. Uh, I was talking to a journalist from uh, New York Times about obituary for Saul uh, yesterday evening. And as you know, Saul wrote a seminal paper in the late 60s in which he took a famous puzzle, Missionaries and Cannibals, and he uh, described how difficult it is for a computer to solve this puzzle by brute force, that it, it very much depends how you represent the problem uh, and it was a famous representation paper, which later was cited and was seminal paper. So when I was talking to the journalist, it was about 11 p.m., I had a bad luck, you know. It turned out that he was actually a puzzle buff. He really wanted to know exactly how the puzzle reads and what is the solution. So I dodged it yesterday, but today I got another email from him this morning. He really wants to know the solution. <laughs> so uh, Taz, Don, and I, uh, half an hour. <laughs> Just imagine this moment. I think Saul would, 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 would enjoy it. We couldn't come up with a solution. <laughs> so I, so I called up uh, Eric Nagorni, he is a, a journalist. And you know, in a usual academic way, I, I wouldn't admit that I don't know how to do it. <laughs> well, you see, the solution would be very complicated. <laughs> I don't think you would like to would like to publish this, you know. But let me tell you what the general kind of thing was and this. But he immediately recognized. He said, and I don't know whether this will read this way in obituary, but, but he said, we will put it this way. A couple of his colleagues tried to solve this problem. <laughs> they failed. And they said, we will have a computer do it. <laughs> so I thought that uh, that would make his day, uh, I mean, uh, if he was here. Um, I wanted to say a few personal words about, about Saul and, uh, and then tell you what's going to happen next. Uh, uh, he was a great friend of mine. Uh, we've met uh, every few weeks uh, in Starbucks for coffee uh, for sort of an update. It was uh, uh, meant to be an hour. It always was at least three hours. And we would start from the update on the treatment. Uh, and that was usually a difficult discussion, what to do next every time there was something to do next. Then we talked about, uh, slowly we would go into the usual topics, which was Rutgers, uh, what's happening, AI, I mean, politics. I mean, there were like three hour sessions. Incredible, incredible uh, interactions. Uh, so this, I, uh, I, I mean, what I was admiring the most in Saul was that he was a man in charge. No matter what was happening, whether it was a grant proposal, whether it was a directorship of ISAT or DARPA, or his own treatment. He was a man in charge. And to Saul, it was, there were two stages, making a decision and following the decision. And the making of the decision and indecision drove him nuts. He said, you know what? I am really upset about it. I hate this indecision. These doctors are not calling me back. I want to make a decision and proceed. And that's how the whole treatment was running. Essentially, when he made the decisions, there were no regrets. He was just going with it. And that's how you know he will remain in, in my memory, and, uh, and you know I will really I will really miss him very dearly. I mean, great guy, and you will hear much more uh, from uh, from uh, the list of people here. And I'll just tell you who will who will talk, and, and later we'll open that uh, for for you know anybody who wants to say something. I as a first speaker, I would like to uh, would like the first person I would like to ask, uh, uh, Joe Seneca, vice president uh, for academic affairs, and then. Jean Young, who was associate provost during uh, Saul's early area career here. And then we have a, a couple of colleagues from here and from outside, Tom Mitchell and uh, Sri Sridharan. And uh, then we have uh, students, PhD students. 
And at the end, as a sort of culmination uh, of the evening, we have uh, Kaz with uh, 15 minutes of, I think, great presentation about Saul's life. So, so let's proceed. Uh, Joey, okay.